Alrighty, welcome back everybody. Next day, our PG Cruiser powering on. We left off at a couple fans. We left off at an AC condenser. There's the new one. We're gonna install the new one where the old one was. I think I have an AC line also. I went ahead and ordered the gaskets that I need for this to uh, not put old gaskets back on because I hate that and you hate that. So we're not gonna do that. So, let's get back at it. Oh, I knew I left my flashlight and it died. That's okay. Okay, we need to prep this condensing unit. You know, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I forgot my moment of shaving was uh, self-promotion. Uh, if you happen to find yourself in a position where you missed part one and or part two of this PT Cruiser, just go back and check the links down inside of this video's description and uh, they can potentially take you back in time. Here, let's see if this thing's sealed. Not with the wrong socket. No! Try again. What? Why am I having a hard time doing the most basic of things? Oh. It's gonna go... But not... But not like the first one did. It's pressurized, so you know it's good. Come here. And they gave us new studs to go in. These are to secure the lines. Let's thread those guys in right now. Okay, so I need to change the O-rings on those service lines. Uh, glad that I got an O-ring set. I think O-ring gravity. I think these will do it. I mentioned that I do have one replacement line, and uh, you'll notice that crimp right there. See the crimp? that contains the uh, orifice tube. So we're replacing the line in the orifice. Let's go ahead and pop this guy out before we get too far along with our install. Yeah, that's right. I just used an impact on an air conditioning line. What's up? Reed, you can't do that. Blow the whole system up. Now if I just get this thing out of the fender, we should cut this open see if it's uh, contaminated. All right, new one coming in. Gonna feed it right through the same little path here. Butcher this all up, hang on. Come out of there. I'll pry bar it. No, I won't. Okay, there is a new gasket that goes right there on that flange face. It is a rubber impregnated metal gasket. Just put that right there. Small click. Doing that is actually less stressful on the components than trying to manually apply torque because I'm not actually putting any twist to it. But if you overdo it, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. Okay, let's pluck that remaining O-ring out. Again, the new line got a, came with a new O-ring. This one's gotta go. Okay, got a new one. It's green, so you know it's good. Nice. Okay, so I've got these, uh, little deflector, rubber shields installed on the new condenser. We're gonna go ahead and start getting this thing fitted into its uh, into its home here. Kind of a toy squeeze. We need to get it in there and then get these deflector fin things past the trans cooler. Get everything lined up and then connected and sealed so air can't escape past it. There's, there's actually a lot going on here. Uh oh, that one, that one came unplugged. Bear with me guys. I'm, Fumbling my way through this Chrysler product here. That's good. All right, it sits roughly in position. Sweet. Four bolts. Okay, these are the four bolts that uh, connect the condenser to the radiator. 
Oh, three bolts. That one's gone forever. Hang on. Yeah. Come here, you. Got it. Got it again. You lose, radiator. Okay, so I've got both of the lines plugged in, the upper line and then that new one that contains the uh, the orifice tube. We're just fiddling with these little nuts right here. Uh, that came out wrong. I'm, I'm tightening the nuts right now as we speak to secure the lines. Then we'll move on and uh, do the core support. All right, so that thing is uh, connected. The condenser is anyway, and now it's sealed. So I'll go ahead and pull that thing into a vacuum while uh, while I assemble the rest of it. Okay. All right, the machine is uh, vacuuming. We'll let that do that for about 30 minutes. In the meantime, get this core support back in position. Hold the radiator. We go in there. Get in there. Almost. Okay, a couple little impact nicks. That'll secure our core support. Six, actually. Six clicks. Nice. Now we need to get the uh, negative jump start terminal slash hood latch installed. That goes right there. A lot of you guys question the alignment of these when I take them off and I just line up the bolts to where they came from. And uh, usually that's uh, right on point. Right there. Clicks. All right, let's go ahead and get this fan unit set down into place. Let's get this thing bolted on and connected and that'll kind of put us uh, in about third base. Almost in the home stretch. Hmm. This one's less broken than the original one, harder to maneuver. Figure it out though, no worries. Sure, there's enough IQ around here to get this done. I hope. Hmm. What have you done? Oh, the wires in the way. I, I see you back there in my peripherals. Uh, hi. What is it? Uh, the dog's in the house, right? The dog? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Was she in the house when you left? Uh, yes. Then, yes, she's in the house. Okay, good. Because I, uh, I did not release the Kraken. Okay. All righty, compressor's fired up because I need to use my little polishing ziz wheel. I want to clean up the surface on this, uh, uh, yeah, what, what's, what's it called? Thermostat housing, there we go. It's kind of pitted and corroded a little bit. Uh, I do have a new thermostat, um, and the seal for the housing is the actual thermostat seal, so I do need to clean this up very well, or very good, or very nice. I need to clean this up, and uh, I'm, I think, I usually don't do this, but I'm gonna put some sealant silicone on here to fill these voids where this corrosion has taken place, because I do not want this thing to leak after I have touched it. <laughs> Make a nice show. So pretty. We can really see the damage now. Look at how deep those, all those pits are. It's not good. Okay, got the lower intake over here. Let's go ahead and pull these old gaskets out. These are semi-reusable, but uh, due to condition that this car is in, I'm gonna just change them. I actually didn't even quote these, so these are on me. Nice and shiny. Oh, I forgot. Yeah, saw a little nugget walk by.
get all the sludge off of here. Years of nasty. Watch out guys, this is stinky. And now it's shiny and stinky. Let's blow that thing off with our assault air gun. I dropped it and broke the, the scope off, so I gotta use iron sights. Oh, is that loud? The youngin's running away. Goodbye, dirt. Flip it, spin it, last it. Oh, there it is again. I almost caught that one. Come back. Silly flashlight with its anti gravity properties. There we go. That's so much nicer. Uh, that way. Beautimus. Let's get the injector harness back where it goes here. You know, it, it just occurred to me I never had to unplug these inject injectors. I don't know why I did all that, because, well, yeah, I kind of did, because I wanted to remove this in order to clean it, so yeah, never mind. Uh, words, babbling. I was thinking out loud, fleeting thoughts. Let's get this main harness connected right here. This used to bolt to something down here. I don't see where it goes though. Maybe I'll run the bolt into one of the bolts for uh, for the head here, or for the, the manifold. Speaking of which, I need to clean that. Here, let's just get all the debris out of that port. Green one, please. Life unit saw that. She's bringing me more brake clean. Yes. Now your training is complete. Do it. Do it. Ah, oh, that was too slow. Do it again. Real fast. One more time. There you go. Yeah, you got it. Good job. High five. dirt into the intake we're gonna ruin the engine got a good wipe a lot of carbon in there wipe that out too yeah. okay all right intakes coming back into its home And bolts, bolts, bolts. There's one. We'll get the easy one first. Easy, right? We'll get the center one first. That way it hangs onto this assembly. That's not even the right bolt. What have I done? That's for the upper manifold. Silly ray. Efficiency, there's the one we want. Okay, so center bolt first. That'll kind of locate the part. And then I can reach in and uh, sneak the other bolts into position. Stay. Another. Just gonna get them all started and then I'll go back in and apply torque. On a second round. 
Then we'll just do the easy ones first. Are you gonna thread? What are you doing? I said easy, that's that's what just happened here. What is this? Why? not lined up for some reason. It seems to be the malfunction here. Odd. There we go. Thread it now. Good. And there's two more down on the bottom-ish in between the runners. Let's see if I can't see that one. Yeah, that one's in the hole. There we go. And one finalized bolt. Where'd you go? Got it right here. And that one goes between these two runners here, between number one and number two. Ow, cramp. Clicks. I'll tighten the two bottom ones. Then I will tighten the three top ones. This one is for the dipstick tube that bolts the dipstick tube to the, uh, the manifold, the lower manifold. That's a tough one. Got it. Dipstick clicks. Okay, next up, let's change this thermostat. Pop that old one out. It's been replaced before. Put our new one in, and I'm gonna put a very slight film of sealant around this just to take up the space where those little voids are on the aluminum part. See that? Very, very thin film of sealant. Ah, I'm ruining it. It almost fell out. Try that without it falling out. Uh, negative. Here, we'll try again with a screwdriver to help me. We'll just use that driver to kind of hang on to this while I lower, or I'll let it fall. Okay, um, this isn't working out. I don't want to glue it. Third time's the charm. I'm just gonna hold on to it with my fingers. It's just the right way. Yeah. There. That was harder than it had to be, I think. Anyway, two bolts to hold it down. E. This is hard to do. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere, I think, right? Yeah, maybe.
thing is terrible. All right, one's tight. Second one, thick, tight. We'll fish that overflow tube hose thing out of there. It's uh, it fell down. Come on out. Come out of there. It goes right there. All right, now I can fit this uh, upper radiator hose again. That goes there, and then we're just gonna plug it in right here on the uh, on the radiator. Good to go. One clamp. Right there. Really? Wobbly eight. That other one was a seven. I don't know why I had it a seven. Click. That's on. This space is so tight I can't even get to the clamps on it. Look at this thing. They uh, definitely used up all the available space. Does engineering count that as a win? If they use up all the space? Let's we'll put you right down there where you go. All right. Okay, backing up some hoses on, injectors are in, lower manifold is installed. Let's get the upper in. I already put new gaskets on it. They're blue, so you know that they're good. It's not really much to get in. We flip it over and bolt it on. I, I do have to find a bolt for the backside though. Remember the ones that were missing and the whole unit was just flopping around? It's gonna break. It's gonna break that intake. Just the vibrations of it driving around. It's gonna break this intake. Let's get these guys threaded and where's that last one? There it is. Yeah. That's two. Three. Nice, this is definitely coming together. I like the home stretch phase. There we go. Check it out, I've got a bolt for that back bracket. Back bracket, words. That is a exhaust manifold bolt for a, uh, I think it was a Doge 1500. It's the one I put the headers on back in the day. Back in the day, that was like two months ago. I put headers on it because it had leaks. And I'm gonna reuse one of those bolts to bolt this intake on. Recycling Dodge parts. Go. Let's just get that. Oh, I can't. No worries. I'll do it manually. But it may take longer. But at least this manifold will be secure and I don't have to worry about it breaking in the future. Ah, fuel line. I'll just plug that in right now. Are you leaving? Oh, I'll miss you when you're gone. Miss you. Bye. Wait, come here, give me huggies. Okay, where was I? The kiddo was leaving. Is that tight? Yeah, okay. So that's tight. I've got the sensors reconnected, hose reconnected. That's bolted on, fuel line on, fuel line not on. That was partially on. Error, error. Mm. Uh, maybe I should have done this with the intake off. Another error. Uh-oh. 
What have I done? I see what I've done. I have it misaligned. There, click. Fuel line click, we're good to go. Okay, next, let's lift this thing up and do the, uh, the bottom side. All right, back down here on the bottom side. We need to connect our electrical connector. Uh, click, please. There. That was pretty tight. Let me uh, just give this one more squeeze. Yeah. That could have been an error. All right, we've got this lower uh, hose clamp to get on. All right, let's move the light. Now we can see what's going on here. I did replace this clamp because the other one came apart. And then I've got two bolts to secure the bottom side of the fan. Click. Okay, two more bolts down here and then we'll grab those two up top. Remember, I left them loose so I can maneuver this thing around. Clip. There we go. And uh, another one right over here. Oh, I've closed the valve here also. Okay, we're all done down here. Let's let this thing down. And uh, we'll check the oil and top it off because I know it's low. And we'll go ahead and start this thing up and uh, fire up the AC, check the pressure, and then see if that reduced AC compressor load translates into less engine vibrations at idle. Because I'm 99.7% sure that that was the, uh, the issue to begin with. That's the kind of thing that turns into a parts cannon because nobody would suspect that an air conditioning problem is causing a drivability problem. But uh, in this particular case, uh, I believe that's what's going on. Okay, the machine has done charged charging. It wants me to turn on the AC, so uh, let's go ahead and fire this thing up. I added uh, two quarts of oil to it. Let us restart things the engine and uh, see if the system's gonna work. And check for our bogging down thing also. Let's see what we get. Okay, come on. There it is, it's on. Look at that, 40 pounds. 150. Let's check our fan. Oh yeah, the fan's running. It came right on. 175 PSI. That's that's great. I like it. All right, let's throw some coolant in there. Yeah, you know, all that work is going to be worthless if I uh, if I blow this thing up. That's not coolant. That's water. proof that that is uh, where it should be. Let's take a look at our engine shaking situation. We do not have that. It does vibrate like a four cylinder, but it's not shaking as nearly as bad as it was. We'll do a before and an after. Definite improvement. We have solved their immediate issue. We solved issues that they didn't even know that they had. A couple of those powering down. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this video out right now. I need to disconnect my machine. Uh, I'm trying to get them to buy a battery. Maybe I can fix up those uh, connectors over there. It's getting an oil change. Uh, all that stuff is uh, off topic for what we did here today. So uh, all that being said, as always, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos. Um, again, if you missed part one or two, uh, just go down to this video's description and check for the links down there and it will take you back in time to the earlier editions of this uh, 2007 Chrysler PT Cruiser. So, again, and as always, thank you for watching, and most importantly, do not forget to have yourselves a great day. See you guys later. Into Chrysler product. Okay, she's alive, it's running. The fan is fanning full time now. Vibrations have settled. The battery's still junk. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna change that yet but I am gonna go ahead and pull this thing out. What's our temp? 60, 58, yeah, better than 80. I'll take that. All right, let's get this thing out of here. Finalized, goodbye. See you later, audience, viewers.
non-viewers, subscribers, non-subscribers. Appreciate all of you. Catch you guys in the next one. Have a great day. And a PC Cruiser.